Hello and welcome to the FT's Brexit Debates, where we invite a series of speakers on both sides of the argument as to whether Britain should stay or leave the EU to come in, make their case and then give them an opportunity to challenge their opponent. Today up for debate is the proposal, Brexit will be a disaster for the City of London. With me to discuss this are two prominent city figures. Arguing for the proposition is Gina Miller, co-founder of investment managers SEM Private. Speaking against will be Howard Shaw, founder of boutique investment bank Shaw Capital. Welcome. Thank you both for coming in. You're each now going to get a minute to make your respective cases, and then there'll be an opportunity to challenge one another through questions. Gina Miller, I'd like you to start. You have one minute on why Brexit will be a disaster for the City of London. Hello, yes, I believe it will be a disaster because every day I look at risk and I'm simply not prepared to take the risk of giving up the certainty we have today. When we talk about trade, um, it's obviously the biggest single trading block we have is Europe. And I know the, the debate has been put forward that we now deal with the internet so that will replace trade. There is no evidence that that is true. There is no evidence that we will be able to trade online or with the Commonwealth or with other countries to replace the trade we have in Europe. If you look at that figure, one area in Germany accounts for more trade than we do with the entire Commonwealth countries. And also, I can tell you, coming from a Commonwealth country to the UK, is that it's not simple doing trade in emerging markets in the Commonwealth. Um, it's like cowboy land out there, and if you haven't been there, those people who think you can just do bilateral agreements, it just simply won't work. Thank you very much. Well timed there. Your time is up now. Howard Shaw, your chance to argue against the proposal that Brexit will be a disaster for the city. Look, one's got to analyse these things in the context of long term. We have to think about what happens to the UK over the coming decades, not the coming 6, 12 or 24 months. From an economic standpoint, we'd be able to take control over our fiscal policy and setting the framework in which businesses, including finance, operate. We'd also be able to combine that with liberalisation of the economy to create a more dynamic environment. Take a country like Singapore. Look how successful Singapore is as an independent small island. Secondly, we'd be able to set our own immigration policy and bring in people on a merit-based system which is not by only fairer but is going to be more fruitful but for both the city and the economy more generally. Thank you very much. Now I'd like you to both face one another. You, this is the opportunity where you can challenge one another. Gina, would you start? I would put to you, Howard, that yeah. I would be very unhappy if the UK became a small country like Singapore. Yeah. But the th second thing I want to challenge you on, or the thing I want to challenge you on, is immigration. Mm -hmm. Because this whole idea that we would be suffering mm -hmm. if we had little pe uh, pe more people in the UK, where is that evidence? Because we've had this scaremongering with uh, Bosnia and Romania. Where is the evidence? Well, look, it's everybody would accept that public services are stretched, that hospitals are uh, stretched, that schools are overcrowded, that there's a shortage of housing. And secondly, why wouldn't we want to choose the people who are best able to add value to the economy? Why would you specifically say anyone from Europe can come in and people from elsewhere can't come in? And, and just specifically, if I could just jump in, just for the city, if you develop what Gina was asking you in terms of how this relates for the city, well, not one just of the, the great, as a look, whole. Let, let's be frank, one of the great benefits that the UK had as a result of 9-11 and the changes that happened in the US immigration system was that a lot of highly talented people from all around the world, extremely well educated, came to London rather than America. And we in the city particularly benefited for that, from that for a, a decade. Now it's difficult to take talent in from the outside of Europe who want to come and live and work here because immigration policy is set by reference to EU laws. But okay. we have Just going to jump in because time is moving on. Yes. This is going to give Howard his chance to ask you a question, but sticking, please, to Brexit and the city, not the general, uh, what it means for the whole UK. Well, I'm going to ask you two questions that are aligned. Do you think the direction of travel of the European Union and the Eurozone and the European economy taking a view over the next 10 or 20 years 
is a good one relative to the rest of the world. In the IE, do you think that our growth will be as fast as the rest of the world? And secondly, if you believe it won't be as fast, do you not think it's a risk to stay in? Because you said it's a risk to leave, but everything in life is a risk. And you've got to weigh yes. up risk reward and judge what's going to be better. So do you not think it's a risk also to stay in? No, I don't think it's a risk to stay in. I think because it's a known, it's a better unknown than the one we would face otherwise. Um, in that, uh, I think when you look at the uh, risk to the economy, we have got a fragile economy. But being out, we would have to negotiate 34 individual bilateral agreements. We would have to make sure the regulation in every area of life in the UK was equivalent to EU regulation for us to be out. Article 50 was never designed to be triggered. There is far more risk in triggering that article than there is to staying where we are. If we left, we'd be able to negotiate an agreement with Europe which allowed continued free trade. It, where we're operating within Europe, if we wanted to be in the free trade zone, we'd have to operate within the framework and rules of Europe. But outside of Europe, we wouldn't suffer European regulation. We'd be able to liberalize our economy and set our framework and rules to suit us. So for instance, specifically for the city, if you take venture capital, why would the European Union dictate to us tax incentives that the government want to provide to encourage money flowing into venture capital? Just want to get Gina to come in but on the, that. But the Open we're... Europe report from 2012 showed that the 100 most expensive mm. EU regulation mm. actually cumulative cost was 27 billion. But the benefit, the cumulative benefit was 57, just over 57 billion. So it isn't a cost, it's actually a benefit. A report like I'm that afraid is we're bullshit. <laughs> we're afraid, I'm afraid we're out of time. I know we could go on. It's a really interesting discussion, yeah. but we're going to have to call time now. Thank you both very much, Gina Miller, Howard Shaw, yeah. and thank you for watching. You can read more and see more on our Brexit series at ft.com forward slash EU referendum. Goodbye.